loss of two crew and 30 passengers. 30, 30 lives lost in one year, 24 passengers, six crew. That really shook New Zealand's confidence in aviation. Now, none of these crashes were due to any aircraft or engineering faults. Causes were weather related, uh, cockpit navigation errors, and ground navigational inadequacies. As I say, these tragedy shocked the nation. Um, in addition to the, uh, the challenges of this rapid expansion and variety of older aircraft types, there was also political challenges when the national government considered selling NAC back to private enterprise in the early 1950s. In the meantime, night flying was introduced with its economic benefits as well as extra seating capacity in the DC-3s and improved scheduling and new group concession bookings. Let's look at the next little time. Out with the old and in with some new. Uh, 1951 was a memorable year for both New Zealand and NAC. Industrial relations reached a low point with the prolonged waterfront strike and this had two direct consequences for the corporation. Significantly increased passenger and freight traffic and a distracted government. It meant that political initiatives to sell the airline faltered and also from this time, the Lockheed Lode Stars were out and the new De Havilland Herons were in. There's one not far from where we're, where we're here tonight. The government passed uh, legislation to create the Air Services Licensing Authority in 1951, which will be familiar legislation for many of us. It now became necessary for all companies and organisations, including NAC, to apply to the authority for licences to operate as well as change to routes fares, freight charges, and aircraft types used. Very regulated. So this regulatory act shaped much of New Zealand aviation until the early 1980s. Amid these changing times, the corporation continued to develop, and in December 1951, NAC celebrating the uh, carrying its, its one millionth passenger. Standardisation on the DC-3 was decided upon, and this led to the decision to sell the Lockheed Lodestar aircraft. The last disappeared in March 1952. Now, with um, the DC-3s, with its greater capacity and better economics, was clearly the way forward until more modern turbine-powered aircraft could be available. Um, in 1952, it was announced that the new four-engine de Havilland Herons would be purchased, principally for the Cook Strait service as the aircraft type would be able to use Romatai, which had been closed to NAC since 1947. So the Herons were introduced March 1953 and conveniently coincided with the withdrawal of the Nelson to Wellington ferry. That was interesting. Um, NAC headquarters for all engineering was relocated from Palmerston North to Christchurch to Harewood in August 1951. And this had been preceded by the transfer of pilot training. The final uh, Pacific Regional DC-3 service was flown by NAC in November 1952 and the Norfolk Island service continued for another three years, 1955. Now, I would suggest that the, uh, the coming of age here of NAC occurred in January 1954 when Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II and His Royal Highness Prince Philip were flown from Rotorua to Gisborne on a special flight. So the new Heron, uh, BEQ, was used, flown by Captain H.C. Uh, Walker with First Officer W. Raymond, and for the first time, an air hostess in New Zealand, Miss A.N. Winefield. So passenger numbers continued to uh, increase in the early uh, to mid-1950s. However, tragedy struck in May 1954 when a DC-3 uh, ZKA QT crashed at Raumati Beach while on approach to Paraparamumu Airport after a flight from Christchurch. Mismanagement of the fuel supply was later identified as a likely cause. And the DC <coughs> crash landed into a uh, residential street uh, in, in Raumati, uh, Raumati Beach. Um, three children uh, died in the blaze. The DC-3 caught, uh, caught fire. But amazingly, the 23 adult passengers and the two crew escaped with relatively minor injuries. These were the first fatalities for NAC in more than five years, and this accident was one of the factors which later led to the appointment of air hostesses, 
whose task it would be to supervise passengers in an emergency situation. After a long and uh, extensive period of investigation into the NAC, uh, DC-3 uh, replacement for main trunk use, uh, a decision was announced in July 1954 to order three Vickers Viscount turboprop aircraft. And the, the buy British sentiment, sentiment was very strong for both economic and patriotic reasons. This is a great shot at Dunedin in 1954. Uh, in November 1954, Wanganui was added, and in December of that year, NAC carried its second millionth passenger. So, looking ahead, 1955. The late 50s were a time of continued uh, growth in passenger numbers and airline development, general prosperity for New Zealand. Most notable events were the introduction of Sunday flying, air hostesses, and the new Viscount aircraft. It was the Viscounts that really drove... Um, uh, the training of the hostesses. So in May 1955, Heron services were extended to Napier, Rotorua and Hamilton, and the aircraft operated this route for over two years until the type was withdrawn from service when Rongatai was closed in 1957. Um, NAC public relations uh, initiatives gave attention to the younger traveller with the establishment of the Children's Godwit Club in December 1955 and the promotion of air travel continued with a wide variety of general advertising and the production of promotional short films like Night Flight and NAC Freight Air. Sunday flying began with an experimental period on the main trunk route and the Cook Strait services in December 1955 and became permanent from April 1956. NAC passenger numbers were reported that same year, 1956, as being 426,295 which represented one person in every five of the total New Zealand population. This is 1956. And a ratio that appears to be surpassed in the world only by Australia. So Kiwis were flying and, and trusting NAC in greatly increasing numbers. The introduction in December 1956 of air hostesses on New Zealand domestic air routes attracted much attention. There had been a large number of applicants for training and the uh, new hostess, this is the first group, soon became, became an integral part of the corporation's uh, public uh, relations image. The first air hostesses flew from December 1956, allowing plenty of time for experience to be gained before the Viscounts were introduced. And from late 1960, air, air hostesses were on all NAC flights, except of course the, the dominies of the uh, Northern Service. To help cope with the increasing number of passengers and in anticipation of the Viscounts coming into service, a new NAC engineering workshop uh, and administration was opened in Christchurch in May 1957. And it was also necessary for NAC to provide new engine overhaul facilities for the Rolls-Royce Dart propeller turbine engines in an engine test house. In March 1958, it was reported there were 96 engineering apprentices undergoing training at the NAC Christchurch Engineering Base. Over the years, the Christchurch Engineering Facility had a staff ranging from 600 to 800 people, by far the single largest component of the corporation. The first new uh, uh, Viscount for NAC, ZK BRD, City of Wellington, arrived on 10th of January 1958, over 60 years ago, to a big welcome. And uh, that Viscount entered service on the 3rd of February on the Auckland to Christchurch route with two round trips per day, replacing the DC-3 on, on, on the route, and ushered in a new era of commercial aviation in New Zealand. Now, most obvious to passengers, were the benefits of increased speed, uh, a pressurised cabin, which enabled flight you know, above much of the New Zealand turbulent weather, and a high standard of comfort with modern furnishings, air conditioning, large open windows, huge windows in fact, comparative quietness, and much reduced vibration. And at the same time, the almost elimination of air sickness, the travelling public. Now the new Viscount, uh, this is a Christchurch, uh, flights on the Christchurch to Auckland to Christchurch route took about one hour 55 minutes, but a record was reported in June 1958 of one hour 36 minutes. 
and this was very different from the three and a half hours of the DC-3 Auckland to Christchurch. Um, other than that, an unfortunate uh, landing incident in Whanua Pai in 1958, the, um, the introduction of the Vi Council was really an outstanding success, and the aircraft quickly became very popular with the public. NAC, through the technical development section, continued their fleet upgrade planning in the late 1950s with extensive studies for a DC-3 replacement. An aircraft soon identified as possibilities included the Fokker Friendship and the Henley Page Herald, both with Rolls-Royce Dart engines. And in 1958-1959, there was extensive political lobbying for the contract to replace the DC-3. Uh, moving on to the next era, uh, here's the Viscount at the landing at Whanua Pais. It's one of the very rare incidents they had. Uh, I think somebody pulled out the wrong lever, didn't they? Yeah, so what was happening is the captain and the co-pilot, they'd swap seats, the captain, the one that's sitting in the captain's seat, he's going to, he's going to do the delivery flight, the second one out from England, who's being checked out. And so the captain, who's just checking him out, said, oh, well, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll shut the brakes. So I'll close the brakes and set it in. Pull yeah, up the carriage. Yeah, there we are on their brand new aircraft. Well, moving on, turbo props take charge. This is 1959 to 1962, and uh, early in 1959, NAC carried its fourth millionth passenger, and this marked the beginning of a period of unprecedented change for the corporation with expansion of services and the introduction of many new turbo prop aircraft. Two new Viscounts entered service in early 1959 in Palmerston North with its airfield extensions, welcomed uh, Viscount services in April, the first destination off the main truck route for these large aircraft. In late 1959, an order was placed finally by the government uh, through NAC for four Fokker Friendships with delivery scheduled uh, for late 1960, and another four aircraft were ordered for delivery in early 1961. Now, I mentioned about Parapara Umu had its last day of NAC operations, 1st of November 1959, and then the transfer to the new, you know, air, uh, the new uh, airport at uh, um, Rongatai. For 12 years, uh, Parapara Umu had been synonymous with DC-3 aircraft of NAC. Now, 1960, uh, NAC staff consisted of at headquarters, 161 people, Flying staff, pilots 176, air hostess is 50, engineering stores at Christchurch 652. There were also 15 branches, town, city town offices and, and airports, including here in Tauranga, including aircraft maintenance with 884 staff. This made for a total NAC staff family in 1960 of 1,923. Now, the year of 1961 was the single year of biggest change since the corporation began. And here's the new, um, the new uh, um, uh, Fokker Friendships. One new uh, Viscount was added. Eight new Friendships were introduced into the fleet. And this marked an, an important transitional period in which the DC-3s were progressively replaced on many of the secondary routes. And this work involved uh, further training and modification of many systems, including the challenge of readjusting timetables to bring the new aircraft into productive use. However, the full utilisation of these modern aircraft are often hampered by the continuing restricted number of suitable aircraft for the turboprop aircraft, together with a serious delay in the uh, completion of Mamona there at uh, Dunedin. Uh, and this is a cockpit of a friendship. On 12th of December 1960, the first Friendship ZK BXA arrived in Wellington and entered service on the 22nd of December. And Friendships were soon introduced on many provincial uh, routes to places like Nelson, Invercargill, Wanganui and Palmerston North, particularly as their runways and terminal facilities were upgraded. And uh, the introduction of these new aircraft, the same year in Tauranga, massive community events to welcome this big advance in technology. Now with the new aircraft um, making a real uh, impact, it was, uh, this is a Wanganui, first service, it was reported in March 1961 that there was a continuing and significant increase in air freight business for NAC. However, there was a fall off in passenger traffic in the early 1960s, mainly associated with the general economic downturn of the time the introduction of the Aramoana roll-on, roll-off ferry, and maybe the, the competition by spans. 
Um, July 1961 was a disaster day when the NAC headquarters were burnt down in Atia um, Key there in Wellington, loss of all the records too. And just the following month, the general manager, Captain Jack Bush, also died, uh, replaced by uh, Doug Patterson, who was destined to continue as the influential general manager of NAC for the next 17 years. Now, NAC made a rare foray into the small airline business with the purchase in 1961 of a one-third shareholding in Tauranga-based Bay of Plenty Airways. And this was the only occasion NAC invested in a small airline, but ironically, it was only two months later the airlines tra tragically lost its aero commander on Mount Ruapehu, and of course, there's an extensive display downstairs, and this directly led to the demise of Bay of Plenty Airways. Dunedin's new Mamona Airport was finally opened May 62, almost 12 months behind schedule, but initially was available only for friendship operations under visual flight conditions. Further new NAC destination 1962 was Fokotani, which joined the NAC provincial network. So the corporation introduced a Gisborne, Fokotani, Tauranga, Auckland service on the same day, 1st of November 1962, and it was well supported by uh, Bay of Plenty people. Well, the next era. The DC-3 lives anew to fight another day, 1963-1966. Now, even with the emphasis on NAC's new turboprop aircraft, uh, a new lease of life was needed for the DC-3, thanks particularly to the um, competition from Spans. So, 1963 also, NAC flew Queen Elizabeth and the Duke of Edinburgh on a Viscount flight from Dunedin to Christchurch. Uh, but this event was overshadowed the very next day when another Viscount overran the southern end of Wellington's runway. And while the incident uh, looks very dramatic, and it was, there was fortunately no injuries <coughs> and uh, minimal damage. Quite remarkable. In one sense, it's quite a dangerous airport, Wellington, isn't it? But there's been very few incidents like that. From early in the year, the Christchurch engineering base was busy with the major upgrade of many of the DC-3s and uh, disaster struck on the 3rd of July 1963, day, uh, a date known by many Bay of Plenty people, 3rd of July 1963, with the NAC DC-3 flight 441 from Auckland uh, to Tauranga, to Gisborne, to Napier, to Wellington, crashed into the, uh, the Kaimai range with the death of the three crew and the 20 passengers. This was a, a nationwide tragedy with an outpouring of uh, public sympathy as many volunteers helped and others extended care to those who had lost loved ones. Helicopters also played a pioneering role in the search and recovery operations. Very difficult time for NAC staff, uh, some of the families, especially here in Tauranga and Gisborne. And the accident there on the top of the Kaimai Range is still the worst avi aviation accident on New Zealand soil long may it continue to be so. The latter part of 1963 continued to mark a changing era for NAC with the first television commercial being broadcast using a French aircraft as the star. Same time the last Domini aircraft ZKAKY just preceded by AKU that's based here in Tauranga was withdrawn from its northern service and the, the Dominis, the DH-89s had served NAC from its beginning in 1946 right through until 1963, and the annual report said tribute must be paid to the part this aircraft type, the DH-89, has played in fostering air services in these parts of New Zealand. Um, following some national government promptings during 1964, Barr, Burgess and Stewart conducted a study as to whether NAC and Teal, you know, uh, Air New Zealand from the 1st of April 1965, should be merged into one airline. And their report, uh, released in 1965, recommended against amalgamation to distinct entities with different uh, culture, really. Auckland's new international airport opened for operations in November 1965. The first aircraft to take off from the new airport was an NAC DC-3 freighter there, Graham. Um, earlier in July, uh, an NAC DC-3 also made one of the first landings. NAC hostesses, uh, enjoyed a uh, stylish new uniform, 1966. This was the first time there'd been a complete change of hostess uniform design and colour, 
and the new uniform is made of all world uh, uh, barothea, a colour especially created for NAC and named Golden Cloud. Uh, management noted that in March 1966, NAC would carry for the first time one million passengers in a calendar year. And the comment was made, this milestone of progress is indicative of the popularity which Air New Zealand and New Zealand enjoys. In this respect, New Zealand shares pride of place only with the United States of America in having the greatest number of domestic air passengers to total population, approximately one in three. It's 1966, over 50 years ago. NAC and Blenheim's Safe Air signed a contract in 1966 for SAFE to carry much of the NAC freight, and this led to the end of the DC-3 freight service and aircraft were progressively withdrawn from later that year. From then on, all freight in excess of the capacity provided in the NAC passenger aircraft will be carried by SAFE Air. A milestone of the 10th millionth passenger carried by NAC was celebrated in May 1966, and with passenger traffic still increasing, four more friendships were delivered that year, and in December, the fifth and final Viscount. Well, the next stage, here come the Jets, 1967 to 1970, and I might say 50, more than 50 years ago. By the late 1960s, NAC was a mature and efficiently run organisation. The 21st anniversary of the, uh, of the corporation coincided with the introduction of pure jet aircraft on the main truck routes, and signalled a new era of New Zealand aviation development. In May 1967, uh, a Friendship was the first NAC aircraft to be painted with the new National Airways livery, and the scheme was to be worn by the Boeings the following year. And the, the board also made at that time, 1967, a, a significant decision when it decided to go ahead with a new computer reservation system called uh, DORA. And this in, involved purchasing advanced IBM computers and considerable planning and work was done leading up to the phasing of the new system from late 1970. And uh, Viscount uh, BRD had the distinction in 1967 of becoming the first NAC aircraft to be fitted with a flight data recorder. Now the, the, um, the prepare the preparations for the introduction of the Boeing 737s were a major undertaking by the corporation. In March 1968, training of specialist maintenance personnel and air crew commenced with engineers and pilots going to the Boeing factory in Seattle. There was a range of work to be done, including administrative and uh, facility alterations to meet the requirements. Procedures for ground handling at airports were also revised in order to handle the larger number of passengers to and from the aircraft. 21 years of official NAC operations were commemorated in various ways at this time. So virtually the whole period from 1947 to 1961 had been one of continuous development of commercial aviation within New Zealand. Passenger numbers travelling in, in 1947 were 150,040 people. In 1968 it was 1,155,000. Incredible sort of growth. Uh, NAC inaugurated a new transalpine route in uh, December 1968, one of the last routes when the Christchurch to Hoka ticket service was launched. I was there as a boy. Um, so the first Boeing 737s, we might just back up one slide if we can, uh, Adez. Um, the first Boeing 737 uh, approximately, uh, pro sorry, appropriately registered ZK NAC, I don't know if that one's NAC, arrived in New Zealand September 1968. Who remembers that momentous occasion when the 737s arrived? A good number of people. Um, and was introduced on services from October 1968. So we've had these jet services uh, on the main trunk since 1968. So most young people have no idea what, what, what went before. The new jets cut the Auckland to Christchurch flight time from 1 hour 55 minutes in the Viscounts to one hour, 20 minutes uh, in the Boeings. And in fact, not much sort of today, is it? Uh, so the new jets enable the Viscounts to begin their major airframe work and eventually uh, their withdrawal. And uh, yeah, keep on going again, we'll go forward. And, uh, uh, and again, there we are, yes, there we are. I think you're interested in that shot. Uh, in in mid-1970, and uh, uh, 
the NAC introduced a new hostess uniform with mini skirts and vibrant modern colours and the new design made quite an impression and staff soon coined the, the lollipop name for the new style. And I might add, when we did our tour around New Zealand for the um, 60 years of NAC in, 19, in 2007, we had a number of um, former hostesses who could still fit into their uniforms with us and wherever we went, uh, a lot of media interest, they weren't interested in talking to me and Peter as the historians, they wanted to talk to the hostess. Uh, and it was just amazing interest and especially the golden cloud uniform and this uniform too. In mid-1970, you know, uh, I mentioned about the uniform, uh, air fears increased. Mid-1970, the era of the DC-3 was coming to an end. And June 1970, the last uh, services uh, were flown. Um, and uh, November 1970, Westport Air Airport was also reopened into friendships. Well, we move to the next um, next year, 1971-1974, and get going on more uh, Boeing's. This is at Invercargill. Increased uh, passenger growth necessitated more capacity. And so in the early 1970s, uh, NAC acquired further Boeing 737s. Seating capacity was also increased from 95 to 100 in the existing aircraft, and the new additional aircraft were an integral part of the plan to replace the aging Viscounts. From February 1971, the network reservation system was fully transferred to computer, and all NAC branches were linked to the new head office centre in Wellington. The system was claimed at the time, 1971, to be amongst the most technologically advanced in New Zealand. From the early 1970s, freight volume increased markedly, generating extra revenue for NAC. The increase in freight was due to a range of factors, including frequency of services, aggressive marketing, and the larger freight capacity of the uh, 737 aircraft. In July 1971, the fourth 737 was delivered. And uh, in March 1972, NAC celebrated its 25th anniversary. So the growth of the corporation during this time had been spectacular. The 1947 fleet uh, uh, created 40 million passenger miles, and this had increased 15 times to 610 million passenger miles by 1972. The number of passengers carried annually had gone from 147,000 in 1947 to 1.5 per year in uh, 1972. And there'd been massive technological development from the, the pre-war de Havilland wooden biplanes like the Domini uh, through to modern jets. Unprecedented growth and an advance that will, I don't think, ever happen again. So over the years, there was much continuity of management leadership. And this was a key factor in the unity and the, the family nature of NAC. And those of you who are NAC staff will attest to that personified by the efforts of General Manager Doug Patterson. Now the, the DC-3 actually made an unexpected comeback in June 1972 when it operated for two years from Christchurch to uh, Omaru. And uh, late in 1972, Safe Air became a fully owned NAC subsidy. And this was a time of wider investment as at that time NAC also took a shareholding in New Zealand Aerospace Industries in Hamilton. And in 1973, uh, took a small uh, shareholding in Mount Cook Airlines. At this time, NAC provided many pilots and engineers on loan to Malaysian Airlines to assist in the setting up of that airline. And this was consistent with the developing work of NAC with other airlines and was an expression of its international reputation, especially through its well-equipped operational training and engineering resources at Christchurch. These specialised commercial facilities were appealing to a number of airlines from as far afield as India, and Canada, and especially those in the Pacific area and those who operated Boeing and 737 aircraft. The Commonwealth Games were, were held in Christchurch in 1974 and attracted much international uh, attention, and as a prominent supporter, NAC placed the Games logo on its aircraft. 1973, the first 500 series French uh, aircraft were introduced in the fleet, and with extra capacity, this was the 14th uh, friendship at NAC service. A fifth 737 was introduced in 1973, and at the same time, the Viscount City of Wellington, the former flagship, was retired from service after nearly 16 years of service, 